In this episode of Scaling Postgres, we talk about slow queries, PG auto failover, roles, and hyperscale. I'm Creston Jameson, and this is Scaling Postgres, episode 63. All right, I hope everyone's having a great week. So our first piece of content this week is how to identify slow queries in PostgreSQL. And this is from dev2 slash pythonmeister. And this is a very short post, three minute read, but it tells you exactly what you need to do to be able to find slow queries. Uh, number one thing he mentions here is adjust your long min duration statement in your PostgreSQL configuration to be some time period. It could be 500 milliseconds a second. He suggests five seconds here so that in your logs, you see your slow queries. And of course he says you need to reload your configuration after you do that. And even shows you how to test it by doing a, using a PG sleep. So if you're unfamiliar with some of these functions, you can see them right here. And then the next thing he says to do is to use PG stat statements. So this is a, extension that you put in the shared preload libraries configuration of PostgreSQL. Then you create an extension in the database that you're interested in, and it tracks all of these statistics for queries that are running. And it gives uh, some example output of what you can look at to get a good sense of all the queries that are running, their average time frame, for you to identify those slow queries. And then he also does, which I haven't seen a lot of blog posts do, is mention that you can, re because these are aggregate, the PG stat statements, you can reset them. And this is the function to reset them when you feel as if you need to on a periodic basis or if you're diagnosing some issue. So very short, but a very good post telling you exactly how to find your slow queries. The next post is introducing PG auto failover open source extension for automated failover and high availability in PostgreSQL. Now this is actually on the uh, Microsoft.com blog and they've developed this open source tool that enables you to do automated failover. Now I'm gonna look more into this, but it's pretty interesting what they're mentioning here. Now there's other tool sets that do that, but I'd be interested, interested to see how this works. And basically this tool allows you to set up, for example, a primary and a secondary and it automatically, it says it does it automatically, sets up streaming between the primary and the secondary. And it institutes a monitor that does state checks for each of the databases to make sure each one is up. And this is actually on the Citus Data uh, GitHub archive. So the first thing they do is they install the packages, assume uh, the user Postgres, and they create the monitor that's going to be monitoring everything. Then they, uh, in this example, created a small disk for their first node, no, node A, and they created a database, again, using this uh, PG auto control command. And they defined the monitor for this particular database that they created. So this would be their, their primary, basically. And then they say uh, they set up to run a keeper here, which the keeper is what runs on the database to monitor that it is up and active. And then they create their second node and run the keeper on the second node. But in this case, this is all happening in one instance in their example. And here you can look at, uh, they say a watch replication with this command here. And you can add data to the primary and then you can see it on the secondary. And then they caused a failover by filling up the disk essentially in their node one or node A. And they say after a few failed attempts, it's keeper signals that the node is unhealthy and the node is put into the demoted state. And the monitor promotes node B to be the new primary. And that uh, node B is not considered in full primary state since there's no secondary present. It is marked as wait primary until a secondary appears. And the other interesting thing they list here is something that was done with Postgres 10 is that the PSQL client and others based upon libpq, you can set up more than one connection to a database and define which one is read-write. So they're using this ability to be able to seamlessly switch between node A or node B. So this is a potentially very interesting tool and I'm actually gonna be checking this out and looking at it. Uh, one thing that came to my mind is a PG Rewind. Would PG Rewind work in a scenario like this or is that a feature that's being added? Uh, so I'm definitely gonna look into that, but. Definitely pretty interesting. Definitely encourage you to check it out. 
The next post is PostgreSQL using create user with caution. And this is, again, another very short post, but it's talking about uh, distinguishing, they say the golden rule, or distinguishing between users and roles. And basically, PostgreSQL just has the term of role. You can make it a user, or you could essentially make it a role and have other roles inside of it, or users. But the issue they say that you can run into is that when you assign a user, so let's say you created a table A and you assign uh, the user Joe to it, so grant select on A to Joe, if you need to then drop that user, you're going to get an error that says error role Joe can't be dropped because some objects depend on it. In other words, there's privileges on the table A and that there's no such thing as drop user cascade. And the reason being is that these users are created at the instance level, not on each database. So how you get around this is you actually assign roles to objects and then put essentially users in those roles. So for example, they use the cleaning staff, for example, they have a role uh, cleaning staff with no login. So it's not meant to be a user, it's meant to be a role that others are placed into, for example. And you grant the select on that role and then you can grant or add Joe to the cleaning staff role using this command, grant cleaning staff that role to Joe. And then lastly, they also mentioned they also have a utility that they developed called PG Permission that, that allows you to look at all the permissions that exist on your system. Now, related to this post, there's also a second one that did a follow-up called The Role of a Role Within Another Role. And this is from feluca1978.github.io or I should say F. Luca because it's Luca Ferrari. And he's talking about the difference, you know, roles. Are they users or groups? And really, they are both users and groups. And a role is an abstraction for saying it's a collection of permissions to do some stuff. So basically, it's a collection of permissions they can, a role can be logged into or cannot be logged into. And this goes into more depth about inheritance and non-inheritance and how things work. So he goes over a lot of different examples and mentions how PostgreSQL by default now actually grants inherit to users added to a role. So they have the permissions of that role, but you can also do no inherit as well if, if that's something you desire. So if you're wanting to get more in depth knowledge about roles and how they work with users, uh, definitely two blog posts to check out. And I should mention the first blog post is actually about roles is actually from cybertech-postgreskill.com. The next post is Introducing Hyperscale Citus on Azure Database for PostgreSQL. So this is a post on the citusdata.com blog. And a number of months ago, Microsoft acquired Citus Data. So this is looks like one of the first big things they're introducing as a result of that uh, purchase is that they've introduced a new product called Hyperscale Citus as that's part of their Azure uh, database platform. And it essentially takes Citus and makes it more convenient, easy to use with Azure. So this was just basically announce, an announcement post to that fact. I'm talking a little bit about how Citus works. It allows scale out of, you know, hundreds or more nodes of PostgreSQL and do uh, scale out and execute queries in parallel. Now they go into more depth about that in this uh, YouTube video that's called Building PostgreSQL Apps at Any Scale with Hyperscale Citus. And this is on the uh, Microsoft Developer Channel. Now this is actually a variation that Citus has done posts on before, excuse me, presentations on before called PostgreSQL at Any Scale. So they've actually, this is a variation of that talk, but they're incorporating as the final step, you know, using hyperscale with Citus. So it talks a little bit about Citus and how it does scale out. It talks about the hyperscale offering that's part of Azure, as well as some additional um, features and things they've built into it, with just a little bit of general advice on how to get started with PostgreSQL. So if you're interested in learning more, this is a presentation to check out. There's also a shorter video that's only about four minutes in length, also related to hyperscale and Citus called Unleash Analytics on Operational Data with Hyperscale Citus on Azure Database for PostgreSQL. So again, another piece of content if you're interested in checking out these new offerings. The next post is PostgreSQL version 12 new feature, optimizer support for functions. So this is from cybertech-postgresql.com. 
And they're talking about uh, functions as black boxes, meaning the optimizer, they say, quote here, the PostgreSQL optimizer can't really do a lot about functions. So it can't understand basically what they're doing. And for example, if you do an explain select all from a nest and array, it can't look inside the array to see how big it is. And it's just the planner's just giving you an arbitrary amount of 100 here. But version 12 has added support for this uh, support function. Now, I believe if I'm interpreting this correctly is that you actually have to use some C code to kind of do this function. So at this stage, it seems like this may be of benefit for internal usage, like internal functions for PostgreSQL. I mean, you could clearly probably build your own, but it looks like some of the advantages could be done with uh, the internal tools. So for example, that same example we just looked at in version 12, you actually get the correct estimate. So again, we have three units in array doing an unnest and you can see the estimate is three rows. So being able, the support functions to be able to look inside of what functions are doing from the planner's perspective could be a further benefit for performance for version 12 and moving on from there as different functions are looked at and optimized. So if you're interested in that, definitely a blog post to check out. The last post is PG Backrest, a great backup solution and a wonderful year of growth. So this is talking about essentially PG Backrest uh, backup tool for PostgreSQL. They go over the uh, installation, how you, from packages or from source if you want to, how to configure it, uh, do a backup, and then do a restore of that backup. So if you're wanting to get started with PG Backrest, definitely a blog post to check out. That does it for this episode of Scaling Postgres. You can get links to all the content mentioned in the show notes. Be sure to head over to scalingpostgres.com where you can sign up to receive weekly notifications of each episode. Or you can subscribe via YouTube or iTunes. Thanks!